From Chapter 12 of These Thy Gifts by Vincent Panettiere A persistent knock on the rectory kitchen screen door roused Monsignor Steve Trimboli from his involuntary nap. The voice that called out was familiar. Hey, anybody here? Another person might have used a more deferential tone upon entering a rectory, the official residence of parish priests. Calling at this moment was Rosalie Lamarca, and nothing less could be expected of her. She was, after all, the face and driving force behind Glowrow Frocks, a dress manufacturing company she created from a relationship with Steve's mother, Gloria, and an alliance, some said unholy, with Al Rossi, who may or may not have been a gay mobster. Bridie? Steve? Uh, Monsignor? Rosalie strode through the kitchen, across the hall, and into Steve's office, as if she'd been there many times before. She had. "'You make some racket. Thought the Martians were invading,' he said, struggling to shake sleep from his head. "'You okay?' "'Yeah. Fine. So why the nitro on your desk?' "'An ounce of prevention.' His relationship with Rosalie over more than five decades had been constantly evolving from the moment their daughter was born. She was now as much his mother as Gloria, and why not? Their daughter, Stephanie, didn't need mothering, herself raising a young son with the help of her husband, a luxury Rosalie never wanted. With Steve's mother gone ten years, there was a vacuum, and Rosalie filled it, just as she had in the dress business during the mid-sixties when he was in Vietnam. He recalled how they briefly entwined, and then became estranged, heartbroken lovers, concerned friends, and now, like mother and child, an unusual circle of some kind, his ruminations abruptly concluded with Rosalie's litany. Beats a pound of cure. Yeah, I heard that before. Same old song, Steve. You're getting as fat as the other stunad, barrio. Truth was, since becoming Monsignor, he had put on about ten pounds attending dinners in his honor, or as a special guest for community groups who wanted his favor. I have many responsibilities to my parishioners. You are changing the subject. You always do whenever your health is involved. There is a history of heart attacks in your family. Walk around the block, if that's all you can do. I don't care what you do, but do something to get your blood circulating and your fat melting. Tell Bridie to make less fattening dinners. Where is she? I called. She had to leave. Me too. The car for Kennedy is outside. What's all the Michigas on the sidewalk? After years in the garment industry, Rosalie was as fluent in Yiddish as she was in Sicilian dialect. They have the front door blocked, so I had to sneak in through the schoolyard. Something about due process? In the old days, you would have been out there with them, Steve. See? That's what happens when you get old and fat. She grabbed a fold of skin under his chin and gave it a familiar waggle. Gotta run, as always. Her final word then, and whenever they parted, had two meanings. She was always going somewhere, and she always loved him. To be sure, an unconventional love, but heartfelt nevertheless. She patted one side of his face and kissed the other. Rosalie stopped at the kitchen screen door, listened to the persistent clamor, and called back to him. You got a mess out here. What's it all about, anyway? Steve stepped out of his office, but before he could utter a word, Rosalie got the last one. Tell me later, when I get back from Milan in two weeks. Ciao, bambino. Steve hoped the whole mess would be ancient memory by then, but knew it would take a miracle greater than turning water into wine. When Rosalie returned, he would have to tell her.